Blog Talk Radio. I let a bitch get away with something last night. I shouldn't have let her get away with it. And, and, and I'm saying, if you're trying to make having bitches a business, you already fucked. Mm. Mm. You're listening to your number one radio station. Rosebud, better dope. Are you a Mac the Hey y'all, what's happening? This is the goddamn ass Rosebud show. We gonna get down today, man. I got so much stuff to talk about. Um, you know, you can call in, ch- you check the show out six five seven three eight three zero eight zero nine. Call in, uh, press one if you want to ask a question. Other than that, let's get started, man. Uh, you know, we talk about problems most of the times. We talk about problems that dudes be having, you know, different things they go through with their relationship. And, you know, what we doing that for is so that we'll know how to handle shit. So we do preemptive strikes. (laughs) We want to strike them before they actually do it. But, uh, you know, we know relationships have problems. Mine have problems. Uh, Yours have problems. Your buddy's relationship have problems. Everybody have them. So instead of running from your problems, you got to learn how to face them. And anything you 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 do as far as facing your excuse me, I got the heat cups. Let me let me drink this water. Hold on. Okay, anything you do as far as <coughs> handling your business. It's all plus because we want to make sure that we keep both of our nuts when we're dealing with women. Now, um, call, uh, email me, askrosewood at gmail.com. Check out my site, you understand, uh, askrosewood.com, down to dirty101.com. And, and let's just get on with this because today we are uh, – so many of us are out there looking for the right woman. You know, I, um, see, the thing about it, let's say you said, I'm going out and I'm looking for a woman. Now, that's one thing. Now, let's say, on the other hand, you say you're going out and you're looking for the right woman. See, now, that's two different things. One, there's no criteria. The other, there is criteria. So the criteria should be in your hands, of course, but all of that's up to you. What you want in a woman, what you think is a good woman, what you uh, feel makes her good or not. Because a good woman, I mean, or a woman, can think she's a good woman, and she's basing what she's thinking on what she know. What if you knew much more than her about good women? See, the thing is, if you don't know about women, then you're going to be going for going out to get a woman. Because dudes that go out to get the right woman have the criteria. He knows what he wants. She either got, she more than likely got to have a job. And if you're at a certain age, uh, you ain't really expecting her to have no kids. You ain't expecting her to have no drug problems. You're expecting her, I mean, there's many things, the criteria. But what my point is, before you can even look for the right woman, you got to know what makes her right or else you're going to be running into any woman trying to put her in the right 
position. When she may be round and you're trying to put her in a square position or a triangle, because it ain't going to fit. And if it do fit, there's going to be a lot of spaces that's not covered up. You don't want that. This is why tonight I'm going to try to impress on you how important it is to be truly prepared. You're not going to run into the right woman quick. And if you do, that's because you don't have any criteria. It's just as important to know how to deal with the women you run across as it is to know how to deal with that right one when you run across her. You you just have to be prepared for life's unexpected events as well as the expected ones. Because most of the men I speak with, <laughs> they don't understand today's life, uh, you know, in as much as they live through their fantasy ideal life. They don't really understand life. They they have this uh, fantasy of what they think life is. And, th- and I'm telling you, a lot of guys try to live their lives through this uh, fantasy world. Um, as much as you live in this fantasy world, you got to at one time realize this ground that you're walking on, these people that you're talking to are very real. You know, it's the steps that you take on the real ground that matters, you know, in your life. Because those are the steps that's going to get you to where you're trying to go with women. You know, the steps you take to win this video game or whatever, PlayStation or whatever, you guys got those steps ain't shit. What they do, well, they do what they do. It's something about me you can't get past. And if you look at all my past endeavors, no matter what it is, I never deviated from that simple plot. Not one time did I deviate from the underlying plot in all my streams, blogs, projects I tell you about, and all I do. I always talk about being a man. That's right. In in every single thing, my underlying plot to you has always been to be a man at all costs. I don't care what I'm talking about. It could be women. It could be driving fast cars. It could be furniture. I'm still talking about being a man. If you understand that, then you'll understand why I don't get along with the virtual world that most of you guys deal with. In the beginning, every fucking socializing situation that becomes or gets to in, in intimacy, there is the real you and the ideal you. Now, just as it's like that with you, it's like that with her. When you first meet somebody, and you guys start talking, neither one of you are meeting the real person. You guys are meeting the fantasy person, just like she's meeting the fantasy person. And just so you understand what I mean, I, 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 you know, I didn't study this stuff, and I'm telling you, this is real. I've learned that a clinician got to have the ability to get to the real person versus the ideal person. And you got to do it in order to get to the root of any problem. For both of you, the girl and you, the real you and the real her is the one who snores. The real you and the real her is the one who don't really eat healthy. And you're not nearly as agreeable as you are when when you start out. That's not the real you. I mean, when you start out, you, you, you're agreeing with everything down there. No, the real you don't agree with shit. See, the, during the first mean, meetings, first couple of meetings, none of the real you come out of either of you, especially if you feel some sort of attraction brewing, 
But this is where the biggest mistakes are made. Because what better time to show her the real you than before she likes you and before you like her? Because what I'm saying is if you wait to see the real her, you wait until you like her, then she could be a bitch. And you probably still might go, you know, deal with her. It's, it's best to see this stuff in the beginning. I got you, 979. What's happening? Hey, boy, first off, major respect to you, man. Um, me and my boys. We fuck with you hard. We hang on you every word. We chop it up in conversation. Um, I got three questions also, but I'm going to ask two quick ones, and I'll uh, say the other one for later. I heard you say a couple times that... What's that? I said, come on. I heard you say a couple times concerning your conversation. Once you said, I profess it won't take me five minutes to catch a bitch. But then I heard you also say... Sometimes you be in conversation with a bra for 15, 20 minutes. Is the five minutes just when everything is right and the 15 or 20 when you got to work on it a little bit more? What's going on with that? All right, bro. Check this out. 15 minutes total. You go, I, I'm going to have her or I'm not going to have her. I am not saying that I'm so sharp that I can catch a bitch in 15 minutes. What I'm saying is, the way I kick it, I know within five minutes whether or not I'm going to have it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. that first five minutes, I'm doing and saying things that I know is going to uh, get a certain reaction. And when they get that reaction, I'm going to be able to see it. And if I can see it, that means that she's, you know, following, following my plan exactly the way I want. So within that first five minutes, I see I can have her. But the rest of that 15 minutes is getting her. You know, that first five minutes, you know, I, I mean, if I see, you know, she ain't responding right, shit, I ain't wasting no time with this bitch. You know, I'm going to see that in one, two, three, you know, less than five minutes. But, you know, she may be cool as far as how she's responding. But that don't mean she's going to do what I want her to do. But that do mean I got to investigate further. So now that I just spent my first five minutes, I'm in attack mode now, so I'm saying shit that's, you know, trying to bring the punk out. To be, you know, bring, if she got punk in her, I'm finna bring the punk out. And if I don't get to bring the punk out, if, if I don't get to bring the punk out, that means she ain't got none in her. So now I done already mashed on her to try to bring the punk out, and she stood up. So now all I got to do is get close to her and, you know, get in her neck a little bit. And she going to be mine. That's just how the shit right. goes. And, and, right. and if you think like that, I ain't, don't get me wrong. I ain't saying every single time I talk to a woman, this shit happens. I'm saying mm -hmm. every single time I talk to a woman, I'm playing for this. But only mm -hmm. sometimes does it happen. And when it happens, I'm catching. But the rest of the time... That's all practice, man. That's all target practice to me. You know, hey, look at that motherfucker running and ducking and dodging. Let me see if I can snipe her ass 100, 100 yards away. <laughs> and that's how I be thinking, man, because it's a game to me. And as long as I get to do what I think I should do, if I catch the bitch or not, I won the game. I'm telling you, this is, this is, this is the happiness and being a dude to know what he want to do because you can't lose. Think about it, man. You want to catch this bra. So do you keep your mouth shut to catch her? No. You think of something to say. When you say whatever you say, let's say you want to see if this going to work, and you try this, and it works. What I'm saying is everything you trying is working. And then she says something like, nah, I ain't trying to go home with you. You're supposed to see when and that because after she say that and you didn't went through all that, you know, you, let, let, no, let me turn it around. Let me put it on me. Let's say I didn't, you know, talk to this bro 15 minutes and now I'm ready to mash on her and she ain't ready, you know, to do nothing. 
You, you know what I would do? I would say, damn, <laughs> you reminded me of this motherfucker when I first, you know, met, met you, but I just didn't think you was the same bitch. And she going to say, who? I'm going to say, this, this bra was blind in one eye and couldn't see out the other. She couldn't recognize a real motherfucker like me if I was standing in front of her. And then I say, oh, shit, yeah. I am standing in front of your blind ass. Bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right, hey, right. you know what happens? Hey, listen, you know what happens at that point? What? I won. You to come on with it. No, I won. She ain't coming on with it. She ain't saying shit. I just shut her motherfucking ass up. Then, hey, let me tell you what I do to a bitch that tell me when I say, hey, girl, what you up to? Hey, she tell me, nigga, get your black ass. Fuck you. She tell me that in like 30 seconds. I get over to the other end of the bar, and I tell the bartender, send that bitch there a drink. And tell her that I'm so happy she didn't waste my goddamn time. <laughs> Boy, this is how you play. I didn't call bitches like that, man. You you know, they tell you, fuck off. And you send her a drink and say you just appreciate a real woman that don't want to waste a real man's time. And now she she curious about me the rest of the time we in the joint. Do you see that? I got you, bud. I got you, man. All right, brother. I don't What's the other happen, question? Man, but them kind of bras right there, man, they, I ain't going to say they scare me. But when they come back like that after they done talk that shit at first, I kind of don't even want to fuck with them no more because there's some crazy bras, man. They're going to waste my time, and I'm going to come to a point where I'll be like, man, I should have never fucked with you. I've seen you was like that from the beginning. Nah, man. Nah, man. You wrong. When you find them kind, listen to this. Let's say we cowboys, and we out looking for horses, and these horses are out on the range. They wild, and you run up to this horse, and you get ready to throw the rope on that motherfucker, and that motherfucker hold his head down so you can put the rope on it. And then you jump up on that motherfucker, and that motherfucker mosey on along the way with you on his back. And I fucking uh, try to see this horse. And I throw the rope of this horse. He dives and he jumping up, kicking his legs. I finally get the rope on this motherfucker. Then I try to get on his back. He bucking and all this damn shit. See, you got a pump. I got a horse. I got to be willing to break this horse or I need the pump. Because what I'm saying is when you have a bitch opening her mouth saying some slick ass shit and you scared, then you don't need her because she's going to kick you off. You gonna, That's that wild horse that you can't ride. But when, when the, now, there's a, there's a point. You don't want to go past this point. The first point, I mean, the first thing is that she talking shit. So, so you got to make sure that you let her know that you ain't the one to be talking shit to. So you don't say, bitch, this, bitch, that. You tell her some story. Girl, let me tell you something. I was walking down the street the other day, and I seen this bra, and, and, and something told me to cross the street. But I didn't, because she was kind of cute. And do you know, when I got up on that bitch, she tried to stab me. If I wasn't ready for shit, she had to, I'd tell her something like that. That bitch would be in my goddamn story. And then I'd tell her, see, that's why a nigga ain't supposed to fuck with her, bitch. She don't know what I'm saying. She gonna have to ask me, what am I saying? And I'm gonna tell the girl, I'm feeding you what shit. <laughs> and I should, I should have just followed my first mind. Hey, you didn't see by just saying it and then drop, you should have followed your first mind on it? No, that's not good. You gotta pull her in. You gotta pull her in, and when you pull her in, then you drop it. Then you can leave, and you have won because you didn't make this bitch see. You knew what you was doing all the time. You just was, you know, handling your whatever. You don't know what a woman's going to do. The only thing you know is what you're going to say, and you know that what you're going to do when it comes to whatever responding to what she say, you're going to do the right thing. That's all you know when it comes to a woman. Everything else, is up to how she, uh, how how you follow up handling her after your initial statements move her. See, it's a psychology game. It's not about sounding sharp, being sharp, or none of that. Catching a broad is about psychology. 
And if you don't understand that women are hiding, they are all trying to hide from you. They're, they're trying to hide in plain sight. They want to be as fine as they can be, but they want to make sure that they don't look inviting. So, goddamn, what kind of signal is that sending you? What you're supposed to do is not need a signal. You're supposed mm. to hone in on what you're looking for. And that's why in this case, earlier I was talking about dudes look for the right bitch instead of a bitch. Now, this dude that's looking for the right bitch, he ain't going to never catch her because he don't even know what she look like. But the nigga like me, I'm looking for a bitch. So what I'm saying is any motherfucker to give me action, I'm catching. Whereas you might have to wait through 8, 9, 10, 15 women before you get one that's like you think could be the right bitch. Come on, man. Do, let me ask you this, brother. What bra for you would be the right bitch? Do you know it ain't, I mean, it's not a question where you got to get right or wrong. It's just a question dudes don't think about. And I'm just asking you, have you ever thought about that? And if you have, tell me what would be the right bitch for you. A broad that's got a lot of, not all of them, but a broad that's got a lot of the same characteristics that I have, the same interests that I have. Okay, let me ask you this. You don't want to bore the bitch, right? Right. Have you ever heard of opposites attract? Yeah. So what I'm saying is this is two polar differences, uh, I mean polar different scenarios. So what I'm saying is both of them work. What you're saying works, you know, catching somebody with a hell of, you know, a lot of qualities, same as yours. And polar opposites attract each other. So my point is this, bro. All that shit, it doesn't matter if you're looking for a bitch. It only, all this shit really comes in when you're looking for the right bitch. And if you're looking for the right bitch, all you have to know is what makes her right. You know, not correct, but the right bitch, personality, all that stuff. But if you're looking for a bitch... That means you sharp enough to groom her to become your bitch. <laughs> Bro, I, I took all this time to say this, but the best bitch is the bitch that's your bitch. Because the right bitch, she might be everything you like and want and desire, but there's something you don't, you know, some don't click with y'all. Just because she, you know, passed all these uh, criteria don't mean she going to like you. It just means she has the qualities that you would like to have in a woman. So with my point, bro, is all women, every single one of them, are the same. They're the same. I'm not saying you can't see individual qualities in them. I'm not saying right, this you. or that does not stand out. I'm saying you look at them like uh, a lion, look at a giraffe. Like a lion, look at a rabbit. Like a lion, look at a, 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 a wildebeest. They're all food to that lion. <laughs> that's that's, all, and and when, when you see it like that, bro, I'm serious. When you really see it like that, you never look at the bra. You always be looking at where you coming from trying to catch. And that's why you end up catching way more often. Because when you look at a pretty bitch, you try to design your conversation around her prettiness. When you look at a not-so-attractive bitch, you know, you ain't even caring about your conversation because she ain't that fine. Hey, the my best bras... Was was one was overweight when I met her, and the other one just thought she was ugly because of her teeth. The one that was overweight ended up getting down to a size ten, which is not small, but for her it was hella small, and she was fine. And the one that had them teeth, I took her to the dentist and had her put on uh, them braces and shit. And this is when that clear braces shit. 
first came out. What? Hey, bud, that uh, that overweight one that you're talking about, that ain't the Asian bro that was talking about the dick spin, was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, you guys, let me tell you something. I was on Snapchat one time, and, and, and I'm right. I, I was fucking, and I'm trying to get this bitch, and then I see this bitch, and I, I say something to her, and she is shit. <laughs> <laughs> she a Chinese, one of the Oriental bitches. So I, so I said, hey, girl, what's your name? And she said, Sally. I said, Mustang Sally. You know, that's a hell of a song from the old school. But anyway, that was a little joke. We started laughing. I get baby to pull over. And I see she's a little plump. <laughs> and I said, fuck it. I took her on up to the room and stuff. And, and she said, have you ever had a dick spin? I told that bitch, what the fuck is a dick spin? <laughs> that motherfucking bitch describes how, hey, listen to this, fella. And if you ever want some freaky shit, try this shit. Put a hole in the middle of a basket. A big old basket that the girl could get in. she get in there and sit over the hole. And this this basket is on a rope that you pull up, you hoist it up, and then you let the rope down until she can sit on your dick through the hole in her pussy in the basket. And then they let the basket go and spin that motherfucker around. <laughs> if you don't come in two or three turns, you better than me. <laughs> That's crazy. Man, when you when you get that dick smith ship, you must you must have read that book, huh, bro? That's man, so I read it. I listened to it on YouTube. I done read that book like five times. <laughs> hey, man, nobody ever. Listen, that book is probably old as you, but nobody yeah. has ever asked me about that shit but you. You the first one, 979. Let me tell you something, man. Uh, I don't know what you got in mind, but I want you to know... You gotta uh, you gotta hit my email asrosebud at gmail dot com. Make sure you include uh, the nine seven nine in the prefix, the first three letters. I mean numbers of your phone number. I gotta hit you with something, man. That was dope. That, you you don't know that brought a real good laugh out of me, brother. <laughs> what was your second question? Oh, uh, I heard you talking about one time about. Just bullshitting around with a female in conversation, like just with your humor or whatever. How much can you do that without fucking up your whole conversation? Uh, very little. Very little. And, and and see, if you gotta ask that, then you shouldn't even you know fuck with it, dude. If you if you've been listening to me, you can kind of tell that I'm a uh, funny type dude. I don't crack jokes. But, you know, mm -hmm. I, I see the humor in a lot of stuff. So as yeah. I talk, I'm saying different little things that are humorous, that, that get a smile. And then when I do say something that I think is funny, it's going to be a part of my character. And it's not going to take me out of character. So I'm going to be able to get her to laugh, and I'm going to be able to take her uh, uh, feelings or emotions at that point and use them in my conversation because I'm not out of character. Now, if you got to, uh, let's say, okay, I'm a real serious dude, and now I want to buzz, say so you got to tell, you know, these little funny things, so now I'm going to get funny. And you say something that you think is funny, and then you tell yourself you got to get back in character. See, you kill everything. You kill that. That's what you got to understand, brother, is that what you thinking is right. You got to know how to say you, but you want to learn how to implement these things that you're hearing. These things that you're hearing are the things that's going to make you win. But like you saying, you don't want to, you know, be out of character. And I ain't saying you got to get my course. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that the only thing I could do is vaguely describe what I'm describing to you 
And the only thing you can do is get what I'm saying, but it's not going to solve your problem. Because Mm -hmm. your problem comes from within. Because there is never, ever supposed to come a time where you have to wonder how to be you. You, okay, you, you're okay. never, ever supposed to get in a position or let some kind of situation make you wonder how to be you. You know why? Because let me ask you this, brother. How many times after you learned how to shit did you ever have to ask how to shit? <laughs> I got you. I got you. You know, you know what I'm saying, man? It's like that, yeah. man. It, it, this is where we got to make ourselves go. And I, I was talking about black history, brother, and, and, and it's over the month. I didn't talk about it the whole month. The reason being, I think we making history every day. Me and you, uh, me and the Spanish guy, me and the Chinese guy, we all because we fighting off society's hold on what men think. And we going, we're, of course, we're going back to what men used to think in the 60s, except we're not being pigs about it. We do know women are qualified to do hella shit, but that don't mean they not women. See, so right now, the 21st century, in order to accept that women are qualified to do shit, then you got to look at them not like women. No, man, women are qualified to do shit, and they're women. So let me say this. What's going to attract a goddamn woman? Sure, if she's deviant, some kind of whatever, but if she's just a natural woman with qualities, a man is going to attract her. And as long as that man is not afraid of her successes, he could be whatever kind of man he is. Haven't you guys ever seen or wondered why these rich bitches always get this broke. Elizabeth Taylor, you remember her? She, she, yes. all the richest men in the world, kings, princes wanted her. And who did she go get? That Larry Portinsky guy, uh, a bum. Why do they do that? Because to women, it doesn't matter where you at in life. It only matters what you can show them that they want to see. And that dude must have showed uh, Elizabeth Taylor everything because she put him from uh, being a pauper to being whoever. You, you understand what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, I got you. All right, man. You got anything else? Because I love the shit you got me talking, man. Not at the moment, but with how you get down, I'm pretty sure that ain't going to last for too much longer. <laughs> hey, man, tell your boys. You and your boys are doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to hear this shit, and you're supposed to chop it up with your boys. But listen, let me tell you why you're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to let you go. Mm -hmm. Bro, you got to make sure that them dudes you're talking to are sharper than you, or at least as sharp as you. Right now, you don't want to be the leader, but you want to be part of a group of motherfuckers that's sharp. And the reason you want to be a part of that group is so when y'all kick it, you ain't going to hear no stupid ass shit. It may be different from what you think, but it's going to be coming from a cat that got your respect. So you have to try to see what this motherfucker is saying. Even though you may not go for it, ultimately, you at least got to see what he's saying. Otherwise, you can't be stuck on just your view. You got to give, uh, I see Sean is on here. I'm going to use him as an example. Uh, you got to have the confidence that somebody you trust, you can talk to and tell them blah, blah, blah. So I call up Sean and I tell him, woo, woo. And man, you know, it was like this for me. And he said, yeah, bud, but, you know, you could have actually did this. It's simply because he's telling me something different and I have the level of respect for him that I have, that he's earned from me. Man, I'm going to listen to what the fuck he's saying and I'm going to actually try to try it because it's obvious that what I thought didn't work or we wouldn't be talking. (laughs) You know what I'm saying, bro? 
Yeah. All right, man. I'm I'm putting you back in. If you get anything else, holler at me. See, the thing about me is that I know when I first meet a person, there's there's a a, a lot of stuff that I'm going through. And when I go through it, what it actually does is help me. But my point, I don't let the things that I need to go through change where I'm coming from. Why? Because if it does, then I'm going to be confused. I don't allow, because I'm talking to this bro, because I want to talk to this bro, change how I'm going to get at her. Of course, how I'm going to get at her depends on what situation I'm in. So you can't say, I can't say that every single thing that I think is planned, but I can say that because once I open my mouth, I'm flowing with my system, which is my arsenal system. I'm going to say, I'm going to say something and she going to respond. And from what she says, I'm going to take it and make some sort of little jovial type statement. And and once I get her to smile, see, all of this is an attack because I know what to do after she does what I'm looking for. I can't help that I'm sharp like that, or can I? Because, see, you can't help that you're what you're experiencing. But this is the, this is the dope about five one nine. Let me let me get you before you leave. Hey, hey, bro, I got you, man. Hold on. Hey, this is the dope about what we doing, man. You know, you can't lose because you're using something that shows you what a win is. And for your information, a win is not catching the bitch and fucking her tonight. That's a place. A win is when you catch the bitch and don't fuck her, and she be calling the fuck at you, trying to get you to fuck her. And then when you bust her out, while you busting her out, you tell her this magnanimous plan you got going that you need help on. Then watch that bitch break you off a couple of racks. <laughs> Come on, 519. What's up, bro? Hey, what's up, bud? Um, I think I hit this shit by accident, man, but fuck it, we're in here now, man. Uh, my name is Eric, bro. I'm new to the course. I've been emailing you the past couple of days, bro. And uh, I just want to say, man, this shit is fire. And the only emails you're going to be getting from me from now on are the, the rest of the payments and whatnot, and I'm just going to sit here and process this shit. Oh, 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 oh wait, 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 wait. You, hey, 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 you the brother that's, that's in school that I, I did a deal with? Yeah. Uh, huh? You no, was no, no, you, I'm every not, I'm not, I'm not in school, well, well, wait, 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 wait. You the brother that I told you not to email me on every yeah. doggone revelation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 this brother here, this brother bought the course, man, and, and I think he watched like five minutes of it and stopped it and said, "Oh shit, this is dope. I got this." And then I think. He watched another seven minutes. I'm like, oh, fuck, this shit is dope. <laughs> man, this brother hit me, man. Hey, and I said, man, don't hit me so often. Then the, the last one, he, <laughs> the last one he hit me, he said, well, is these 277 things what I should have got? <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I said, hey, bro, hit me. Bad, dog. <laughs> no, it ain't. No, it ain't. You know what that is? All right. That's excitement. Yeah. That's excitement from seeing something that'll work. You see it. Bro, something I can't even sleep. That... I can't even sleep at night now, man. <laughs> hey, you seeing something that you wanted, that you took a chance on, and is actually what you wanted. I mean, we don't get to do that very often in life. So I understand. That's why I was fucking with you, man. <laughs> That's why I was saying, hey, man, don't be asking me shit every time you learn shit. You know, <laughs> but, bro, that's what you're supposed to do. But what you're supposed to do is wait till you in the school. And that energy you have, right. it's going to come back to you. And what you do is ask these questions in the class. 
and all those cats going to have, they should, and I'm going to make them be able to, <clears throat> but all of them are going to be able to answer you. And what's going to happen, bro, is let's say it's 25 motherfuckers in there. You're going to have yeah. what you think and 25 other thoughts that you didn't think. And therefore, you go now where you started a situation with one thought to deal with it. Now you got 26 thoughts to deal with it. I mean, it's better to have more to choose from than just one choice. And that's what we doing. We, we getting like-minded individuals together so that we can kick it and understand that you don't have to be uh, what I am for to be a man. You could be a plumber. I could be an electrician. This other motherfucker could be a taxi cab driver. But if we got the principles of being men, we buddies, and we could kick it. That's how I feel, man. Hey, hey, hey. hey. That's right. Let me, tell That's you right. This be- let me tell you this before I let you go. I love motherfuckers like you, man, <laughs> because I, I ain't going to be able to say shit that your ass ain't going to check. <laughs> and I'm ready right, for right. you. Hey, hey, when, when, when oh, SWU yeah. start, I'm ready for you, bro. I'm going to put you I back in, it. man. Hey, hey, 707, I'm coming at you, man. What's up? Wait, 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 I didn't get you. Hold on. What's up, 707? Hey, bud, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. How about you? Oh, man, I'm doing well. Actually, uh, what I did want to say, man, because I always hear you on uh, – on here talking about, you know, particular analogies relating to the jungle and lions. And actually, man, um, earlier this week, I went and checked out this one particular lion documentary, and it was real interesting because it, it really, man, it hit on what you was talking about, like, within the first five minutes of it. And what had happened was basically this lion was at this watering hole, and uh, it was basically, you know, hiding out to, you know, get all these various animals that was at the watering hole. And the narrator was saying, while uh while it was crouching down before it actually, you know, darted off to go, um, basically it was saying that, you know, as it was running, it was making its decision on what particular animal it was getting. And it goes, that went, that hit me because it went straight to, you know, what you always talk about, man. It's always really about being fluid and going straight at it and not thinking. And, you know, making okay, that decision. Okay, check, check this out. Check, check, yeah. check this out, bro. You shouldn't have never mentioned lions. I'm a lion freak. I watch every fucking documentary. Let me tell you this. A lion very seldom hunt because the lionesses, the female lions, they do all the hunting. But if he's stranded or something happened where he by himself, he hunt because he can hunt. But a lion can only run for about a minute. Not even that long. Because if he don't run in that, if he don't catch his food in that amount of time, he's going to be too tired. And them motherfuckers going to be darting, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm saying is only one point you made that was wrong, and that's that the lion makes his mind up which one he's getting as he's running. No. The lion do not come out of his crouch unless he sees a target. This target is either limping or this target is younger or this target can be moved away from the group. And it's got to be done really quickly. So what that lion does is sneak up as close as he can get until he thinks he's close enough to dart at him. And when he dart, his initial dart is to make the crowd of, of uh, animals go a certain way. But he already know that his next couple of steps is going to be focused on this one animal. And he, if let's say he want to get it away from the a group, he going to do whatever it is to make that motherfucker dart away that's going to get him away from the group. And then he going to catch him. Now, what I'm saying is you're right with, as far as when you see that, that documentary and, and you can see everything that I'm saying as far as the lion ain't, Giving a fuck if it's a wildebeest, he don't care if it's a he don't care what it is. A lion is hungry, and all he want to do is eat. And that's how we gotta be, man. And I don't mean rip flesh apart like lions do, but I'm saying we can't be looking for no certain woman. That, that's yeah. like the lion saying, 
That's like the lion saying, man, I'm hungry as fuck, man. And that goddamn wildebeest just land. Man, I don't want a wildebeest now. I think I want a doggone, uh, I want, I want some other. And he passed that motherfucker up. Lion ain't gonna do that shit. Lion yeah. wanna eat. And he don't care yeah. what fills him up. Because there's one thing that you, excuse me, that you would do that lions don't care about doing. If you caught whoever, she wasn't the actual one you wanted as far as how you think. You can groom her. You can train her. That is, if she wants or accepts that. You don't force none of that on her. But see, the lion, fuck you. I don't care where your leg at. I don't care where your arm is. I'm biting that shit off and eating it. And after I'm done with it, whoever want to fuck with you can have you. <laughs> that's, right. that's how we got we got to be, although we ain't going to do that. But let me tell you something, man. Won't we do that? Hey, you dealing with baby? You, you done did everything you can for her, and she still got some kind of stupid, let's say she an alcoholic type bitch and drank too much. You didn't try this. You didn't. Try, you didn't did well, man. Kick her to the curb. Well, I'm saying a lion yeah. ain't kicking nothing to the curb. Period. Even if he's full, that motherfucker gonna pick his food up and take it up in the tree so so he can just stay there till he get hungry again. This is this, not wow. Not you know, uh, 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 what what do you call it? Viral, not viral, but whatever that word is. Carnal. N- not that kind of way. But but we got to be like the lion. Single yeah. mentality. You know, what we want is what's happening. And then, check this out, bro. That documentary, I bet that documentary, if it went deep into the lions, it showed you how that lion sits. Once he got a pride of, of, of lions, he sit where he can be heard, and he don't growl unless he think this or that. And when it's time to eat, he go with him, but he ain't running after no damn food. He a king. He go let <laughs> him know, hunt. Go ahead. Yeah. No, nah, and I was about to say, I, I should have, uh, let me correct myself, man, because actually the actual documentary I was watching, it was about, um, it was about a lioness that got banished with her two cubs because, anyways, man, the the male lion took over this particular pride, and uh, you know how it is. The lion that has the uh, cubs, the lion was about to kill him, so you know the lioness left with her babies, and she basically had to fend for herself. So that's why I was saying as far as the hunting, but I, I didn't correct you because I mean, but yeah, you're right. It was a lioness that was hunting, and uh, that whole hey, hey, check it out though, bro. The the point the point is understood, man. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, not not single minded, but uh, uh, God damn it, focused. You you're very focused. A lion is focused, but it's not just lions. It's any animal, because uh, an animal don't have all the things to distract them that we do. We have thoughts. Otherwise, if you just want to catch this bra, instead of you thinking about hurry, think about this. What if that lion? That's hungry as fuck, considered how many times he missed trying to get this particular food he's trying to get. He wouldn't even chase that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the greatest thing about animals, man. Because, I mean, they ain't that, they they not, that, they're not that, giving that up. They're not giving yeah. up, man. They're going to be, they gonna be yeah. who they are. Hey, and that's what I want from us, bro. Do is what I'm saying making sense to you, man? I mean, is are you relating it to what we're sense. talking about? Make total sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Hey, All right, thanks, thing, bro. bro you- wait, 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 wait! I cut you off, man. Let me get you back. Go ahead. One more thing. What? Yeah. Uh, as far as it was, it was something that you said on Down and Dirty. It's probably like five or six months ago, man. But you was basically saying how, you know, you want to travel. You, you, you're. You in particular, you always traveling at a thousand miles per hour, and when you th- when you traveling at a thousand miles per hour, you're actually being careful rather than going slow 
because you're going so fast that you don't want to crash. It was something like that, but it was so dope how you were saying yeah. it. But I, I can't really Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Listen, check this out. You're driving down the street, and the speed limit is 25 miles an hour, and you're driving 15 miles an hour. I mean, don't you think that you're being safe? Uh, too much. Too much. Well, I'm not saying about the speed as far as is it fast enough or not. I'm saying you're under the speed limit, so you're being safe, right? Yeah, you're being safe. So yeah. think about this. The speed limit is 25. You're going 50. It's not because you're drunk. It's not because you're stupid. Let's say you got somewhere you got to be. So instead of you driving 50 miles an hour and not thinking about shit because the person is driving, you know, 15 in the 25, they ain't thinking about shit. So they crossing this intersection and they ain't looking for shit and bam, some motherfucker run into them. Why? Because it's an accident. But the motherfucker that's driving 50, he totally looking at this intersection before he get to it. And when he going through it, he's looking both ways to make sure he can make it. Why? Because he's being risky. And when you take risk, the only way they pay off is if you avoid all the traps of what that risk is presenting. And for dudes like me, check this out, man. Hold on. I don't know what you do for a living. Yeah. But let's Not. say, no, no, listen, let's say you was a carpenter and you knew how to design and build homes. All right. Now, there's this other guy that know how to design and build homes just as good, if not better, than you. And you're driving down the street going south. And across the street, you notice this motherfucker that's just as bad as you. Look like he finna get at this person that you was finna go drive down the street, stay and, you know, do all the laws, make the right turn, make the right turn, make the other right turn, then call, make the left turn and get back. I'm saying, why are you doing all that? This motherfucker that did, he didn't call or did this, this person, he didn't call him. What I'm saying is, let's say that situation is going on, and you see it, and it's against the law to make a U-turn right there. Would you make the U-turn? Yeah, because, I mean, at that point, man, it's, it's about the money at the end of the day. No it's, not about, no, it's not about the money. It's about not giving a fuck what you got to do to be where you're trying to be. You can't let nobody determine how you're going to be or get to where you're trying to uh, get or be. You determine that. So what I'm saying, of course, if it's about the money, you'll turn around. But no, nah, man, it ain't about the money to a motherfucker like me. It's about what you're supposed to do. And what I'm supposed to do is not be a person that follow laws. I'm not saying I'm supposed to break them. But I'm not supposed to be ruled by laws because I'm a lawless motherfucker. And the reason I'm yeah. lawless is because I'm totally honest in what I do. I'm not trying to lie to damn bitch about shit. That's why I don't care if I'm riding down the street Rolls Royce like a motherfucker and the police got this two bitches that 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 I pimp on like a motherfucker every day, and they got them jacked up over the car about to put them in, them bitches don't even look at me. Why? Because I got game, I gave it to them, and they know I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. They know that when I get them out of jail, I'm going to have a lawyer tough enough to go in the goddamn court without them ever having to be there. And if they ever get time, they motherfucking ass going to get like weekends. So what I'm saying, man, so. if you trust the game, 
If you now, I ain't talking about the pimp game. I'm talking about the game of being a man. If you trust it, it shows you at this point, bro. You gonna have to run up this hill, and you can't see on the other side. But you gotta trust that there is another side there. Otherwise, when you get at the top of this fucking hill. You can't slow down. Otherwise, if ain't nothing there, and it's a cliff, you got to believe that you have a parachute. Or you got the game, the life, what you think, then provided you with springs. Strong enough for when you hit the ground, yeah. you just going to bounce. But that, but Go that's ahead, exactly, bro. Man, that's exactly what I was going to say, man, because if, if, really, if you really, you know, gain the momentum, like you say, you know, heading towards that cliff, you would have, you know, grew along the way to know what's, what's going to happen when you get to the brink of that cliff. Like, you can't be there happy you go, right brother. you go to that cliff, man. You got to be running straight There you go, brother. <laughs> what I'm That's saying real, is some motherfuckers, some motherfuckers are half-stepping and actually get up there, but they the ones that fall off the cliff. <laughs> That's real. Me man. and you. That's real. Me and you. Hey, me and you, we going to get up there and know to stop some kind of way or we going to have a parachute already designed or when we jump as we going down, we design and what we need. Those are springs. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Hey, bro. I, I mean, it's that, look, let me, let me see. Wait a minute first because I got something for your motherfucking ass, too. Because, uh, you know, Sam, like you have all my shit. But not nah, I, I got you. What? Well, I, I was about to say it, it's a it's a uh, situation. I actually got your uh, I purchased part one and part two probably like a year ago, man. But to be honest with you, I just never. Uh, I've been listening to you ever since you know I got it, but I ain't got into it because you know as of right now I'm kind of with my uh, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm just working on basically you know being financially independent. And then once stop, I get to that stop, point, stop, kinda... stop, 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 stop. Yeah. What if, what if you got into that course and realized that that's what it's about, being entrepreneurial? Otherwise, you don't have to have a job, but if you have that mentality, the way to make it work is to get the mentality that the core is going to get you to have. Because the same mentality about a bitch, you could have it about what you're doing. And if you have it about what you're doing and you apply everything you're learning to what you're doing, what if it makes you get where you're trying to go that much more easier to achieve? My thing is sure. stop cheating yourself, fellas. You know, there's not one thing. I don't care. See, even see the people in other countries, for the word up, they only have maybe one or two words. We got 15 or 20 words for the word up. We got all kind of goddamn meanings for what the word up means. What I'm saying is you got to think like that because there's no one thing. The only one thing is the thing that you think about your shit because who knows better what's pertinent to your shit than you. No, but but dudes, don't, dudes don't think like that, bro. You know, and, and my thing is to get motherfuckers to thinking like that. You know, quit needing shit. Stop it. Believe me, I don't need nothing. I mean I, I mean of course I'm a I'm a dude so I need bitches. <laughs> you know, but but what I'm saying is about what a bitch can do, fuck you bitch. I don't need shit from you. So no, I'm not gonna be a nice guy about this when I suppose when I think I should be this way. I ain't need nothing from you. The only thing I need from you is what you need from me. And that's the opposite sex attraction. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And that way you can be a better man for whichever woman you do decide to choose. Because you know yourself. 
you know what to do with. Excuse me, I got them. I'm kicking it, man. You know, I got them heat. <laughs> I ain't yeah, that. Right. But you know, but anyway, when I really be spitting game, you guys, I, I just get heat cups. They just come. Soon as I'm saying some real shit, and, and I, I'm telling you guys, you gotta understand the power in what I'm trying to tell you about thinking, about doing the right thing, not doing anything, the right thing. And just like who's right for you, as far as women, the right thing for you is what you think. The right woman for you is who you choose, as long as you're choosing a woman and you know what to do to make her right. You're never going to find <clears throat> this this woman that's right. You can't find her. She's not there. Unless she read that you, you know, want a woman like this, and she said, okay, I'm this woman, and she comes over, and she's really that woman, okay. But other than that, you can't find her. You have to create her. You have to have a working idea of what you want when you're trying to create something. That's why you need to know all the things you think are important when it comes to a woman if you're looking for the right one, which all you guys do. All of you guys. I get it all the time. Man, I can't get, you know, involved. I mean, you know, I can't get hyped up about a, a seven. I got, I'll be looking for 10. See, y'all be, that's stupid to me, man. The 10 is so into herself, she will never let you fuck the shit out of her. The two, she don't even care about herself. She'll let you fuck the shit out of her, and as you fuck the shit out of her, she'll start becoming a woman that receives the, the pleasures of a man, and as you're giving it to her, you're telling a girl, I know you a two, but I think you could be at least an eight. And why are you fucking her? She say, do you really? And why you drill the real deep? Yeah, baby, I really do think that. Man, come on, man. That bitch going to turn into an eight so fast. Clothes, makeup, lose a little weight, you know, the, the caring. She's just going to have a whole other attitude. And next thing you know, bro, you're going to have a bad bitch. But what's important about what I said, caller? Do you really hear what I said? What's important? What do you think? Uh, I just what I got from it is really just being fluid, and uh, just how you correct. No, me no, no, me. no, no. Listen, listen. What's gonna happen when you do it this way is you're gonna have the woman. You're going to have her. She's not going to have you. There's no fantasy you're going to be living talking about what you're doing. Some dudes think, let's say this woman got a hell of a good job and she brings $5,500 home every week, working a regular job. And, and, and this woman got a dude that she break off a 1000 Every week, you ain't got to do shit. See, that motherfucker will be running around thinking he fly as a motherfucker. What do you think about it, caller? Uh, it depends on what he's saying to him. I mean, it got to be something that got her, you know, breaking bread crazy like that. I mean, I, I, I can't answer. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not I'm you not did answer. Hey, 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 you, hey, bro, you did answer, but I'm so slick, you never know what I'm asking you. Because what I'm saying is you said if she's breaking bread off like, you know, crazy like that, meaning he, he getting it good every week. Yeah. A motherfucker like me, man, that motherfucker got a price tag on his forehead. And that bitch could give him 20% of what she have and get his goddamn nuts. Because that's what $1,000 is out of 5000 a week. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What I'm saying is you don't look at shit. And you need to look at shit. Shit is important. Do you think you worth only 20%? I'm not at all, man. 
So what I'm saying is you can't be just stupid and say you worth 100%, but if she really, really, really liking you, somewhere near 50% got to be, you know, you know, if she ain't tripping on money because she already was banked up, over 50% would have to be, you know, what would make me feel comfortable. But my point is, see, if you look at money, you can be bought. Because, bro, think about this, and be honest, if you caught this bad Oriental bitch, she making 5500 a month, and she telling you, just come over and fuck me, talk to me, I'll give you $1,000 a week, you would think you came up. Tell the truth. I would, I would, but it it wouldn't take me long to figure out I'm being bought. I mean, that ain't, that's that's easy. That's a that's an easy situation. Hey, hey caller, yeah, caller, nah. caller, yeah. caller. I don't want to say you lying, but let me prove to you how you are. All right. Let's say you you meet this woman, and let's say she start breaking you off, and let's say two three weeks in, you see that. Well, she's breaking me off, you know, but she, you know, do expect me to, like, come over when she call, you know. What I'm saying is, let's say it ain't a big deal. You just notice this. What are you supposed to do? At that point, I'll have to put a monkey wrench in the whole situation and start breaking things off, like, slowly but surely. I mean, because that's the same thing as having a cougar, man. I mean, it's it's, it's the same thing. It's it's kind of like brother, you know, somebody brother, for brother, brother, save all your shit for yourself because it ain't the same thing. Because right. what I'm saying is why would you put a monkey wrench in something that, let's say you ain't got no job and you are getting a $1,000 a week. Why would you put a monkey wrench in that? Because you see something this bitch doing ain't proper. I it's know, cool, I know, bro, it's, it's, bro, no, bro, no, you, you, bro. I'm not I, saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you're saying that. I'm not even thinking that you think that. What I'm saying is what you're thinking is what the average person will do. You know, when they mm-hmm. see something, instead of dealing with it. So they can continue to live and continue to get whatever this is. They would rather throw a monkey wrench in it. That's because so, so, you so. don't. What? So, so I, I would think after you said that the correct way, if I was in that particular situation, I mean, in order to maintain, you know, that whole particular cash flow that she's given me. I basically just put it out on front street and tell her, you know, it is what it is, and you know, I know what we're doing here, but you know, whatever. No, man, because listen, listen to what, listen to this. Let's say, and I know what we're doing here. It's telling the bitch that she's buying you, and she really didn't want to buy you. She just don't care about that thousand dollars. See, you care about the thousand dollars, bro. Everything you're answering is based on the thousand dollars. Am I right or wrong? Come on, be truthful. No, you're right. You're right. That's because it's about the money to you. What about if it was about what you're doing? It could be two dollars. It could be two million dollars. It doesn't matter about the money. It matters about you having the ability to play your way through whatever life brings you because you are sharp enough to not be thrown by a situation. Any situation is going to make you reference something that you talked about with your peers or something that you never, ever heard of, your peers never talked about it, but you're ready to deal with it because you know you. If you're this kind of motherfucker then there's nothing that can happen to you. That's why I'm not rich. But I don't need no money from no bitch. I ain't trying to get shit from you. Even if you was fucking with me, you couldn't pay no bills. You couldn't do shit. The only thing you could do is break me off, bam, put it in my hand, and then it's about what I do with it. But if it's about you just want to help and the way you're going to help is to make sure it's being spent like you want to spend it, fuck you, bitch. I don't need your help. You know what I need? I need what I don't have. (laughs) 
That's what I need. I need the bitch that I don't have. And motherfucker, I'm talking to you, so you must not be that bitch. <laughs> hey, hey, you hey, just, but, 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 uh, let me just, let me just uh, say, man, I, I only, last time I called you was probably like a year ago, man, but it, it's crazy. I, I, I listen to the archives and, like, I listen to the game, but when I'm sitting here, like, you know, talking to you, it's so, it's so deeper, man. It's, it's dope. It's dope, man. It's real dope. Listen to me. Let me tell you something else that I've been telling all you guys, which is why you should press one. You can hear the shit I'm saying. You can understand the words because it's English. But it ain't nothing like really getting the message because you can feel how I'm talking. You can feel the emphasis I'm putting on the words. And as I'm doing it, as I'm putting it on there, you're getting the true feelings of not what I'm saying, but the power of what I'm saying. Because it actually feels different, right, man? I mean, of course, I didn't tell you to call me. And, you know, a lot of people think that I, you know, do that. I didn't set this up. No, we just bro, kicking it. <laughs> hey, hey, but, but, but don't, it even, don't it even feel different when you're on the phone getting this shit? Nah, it's, it's, it's exactly right, man, because I'm telling you, if I was somebody that was, like, you know, in Kentucky or something like that, listen to, listening in on my conversation I'm having with you right now, I could probably answer them questions better. But as you're saying it to me in real time, but it's just me calling for the first time. It's just I'm trying to, you know, sing it through on a deeper level. But, yeah, yeah, that's dope. Bro, that's dope. listen to me, man, <clears throat> and all you guys listening to this conversation. Stop judging. Stop judging what you do, win or lose. Do what you do. That's winning. Fuck the results. You guys are so result-oriented because this is what society makes you think. Results don't come until you're confident in what you're doing. Let's say you got to talk to bitches. You ain't getting the result. I, wait a minute. The particular results that you want don't come until you're confident in what you're doing. So let's say you want bitches. And you're talking to one, you ain't going to get your results because you're still thinking about what the fuck you should say to that bitch. But when you're walking down the street whistling and your whistle is blowing a balloon, keeping it in the air, you know what I'm saying? You're just like whistling and and then this bitch, you see her and you stop and catch the balloon and start talking to a girl and say whatever. And then whatever the fuck she say, you ready to blow this balloon back up there? Go with you. That's what you're going to catch. (laughs) but that's when you go catch man yeah. I'm telling you yeah. I had to learn that I went out for two years every night and I could not catch another hoe I just had this one bitch and I kept thinking that it was meaning that I wasn't shit. And I just was kicking it with, with, with my partners. Well, actually, I, I was kicking it with my partners, but they wasn't talking to me. We was just kicking it. And somebody said, man, shit, fuck them motherfucking bitches, man. You know, the harder you try to have a bitch, the less you can see the one you can have. That shit um, don't make no sense. But as I rode home, I got to thinking about it. And what he was saying, man, bitches come to you. All you got to do is be fly. And I started thinking like that. And, man, I stopped talking to broads. Not stopped talking to them, but I, I, I stopped caring about talking to broads. You know, because I'm the kind of nigga, I'm getting at every bitch. But only a certain bitch is going to get at me. Do you understand that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What does that mean? I do. I make. What does that mean? Well, you ain't putting the. You ain't putting the. Uh, you're not. You're not putting the. You getting that every. You getting that every woman that you see, but it takes you know a certain type of female to have the. 
she, she's got to be a certain type of person to come up to you. I mean, only you right. come up to you. Hey, listen, listen. Only you right. Listen, you right. But what makes you wrong is that stuttering you was doing to say what the fuck you thought. See, this I'm is what bitches you, man, listen to. Yeah. No, listen, man. I don't want to hear the shit now. What I'm saying is, this is what bitches listen to, man. You know, you are correct. If you would have said, yeah, man, you know, whatever, you blah, 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 just filled it out, it would have been hella more important. I mean, potent. So listen, all I'm trying to get you and everybody that's listening to see. Oh, shit. Let me see. I see a private number and I see Sean. Uh, 707, stay on. Sean, I'm getting you, but I have <laughs> talked to Trey on. I have talked to Trey on today, and he said this might, that he was going to call. This might be him. 111, private number. Who is this? This caller from Ghana. Ghana! Hold on. All right, 707. Go ahead with whatever we was talking about. Nah, you, nah, you, you, was, you was talking to me. You was right. Um, nah, it's too much stuttering, bro. Yo. Okay. Too much stuttering. Come on, Sean. I know you got something, you motherfucker. What's happening with you, bro? <laughs> I just want to say this about the stuttering, right? So let's say if you you go and you meet up with a female, and she got her bur- her bag, like a purse, and it's kind of big, and she say, damn, this is heavy. Can you carry my purse? And you think in your mind, man, fuck that. I ain't carrying no purpose. You know, I ain't whatever, whatever. But you, instead of saying something that's strong, you say, no, no, uh, 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 uh. She going to drill you and try to guilt you. For not, <laughs> gonna drill you and try to guilt you for not carrying it. Now, they, now they, you, yeah, yeah. you are sick with that that's shit. Real. That's real. But let me tell you something. That was so fucking on point. Cause man, <laughs> if you if, man, my woman right now, no, she better not ask me to go get no female <laughs> shit, and you better not ask me to pay hold your purse, you know, or, or none of that. Cause let me tell you something, you ask me to hold your purse, we in the store with a bag full of groceries, I'm walking out and getting in the car and leaving your ass. <laughs> don't ask me that punk ass fucking shit, and don't fucking act, make no goddamn mistake. You can't punk with me. That, that's <laughs> punk shit to me. That might not be punk shit to you or whoever, but that's punk shit to me. And I ain't doing yeah, that. No, bitches better. know. You know better. Bitches know. Yeah, bitches yeah. know, man. You yeah. know, and they going to do yeah. what they do. So, uh, hey, 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 bro from Ghana, what's happening with you, brother? I'm good. I hear some kind of echo. I don't know what that means. Somebody probably got their speakers not- on. You got your speaker turned Somebody on. got their phone speaker. up too loud. Yeah, somebody got their phone up too loud to their own speaker, but let's just roll, uh, brother from Ghana. What's going on? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Following your advice, and I've been catching it recently. So, it's just, it's just a quick Wait, 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 brother. <laughs> wait. Uh, hey, you guys, this is a brother in Ghana. Lives, I think you lived in London, right, man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he lived in London for hell long. But, you know, I told him that I think being a, a cat from Africa, he may be not really understanding the words. But he's thinking, or he thought, that he did really understand the words because he, you know, lived in London. I speak English well. But what I'm saying is this. See, when you're from another country, when your roots or from another country, no matter how well you understand the language of the new country you went to, it's always interpreted through what your uh, natural, your root country is. So what I was saying to him was that, man, you got to like, because he was thinking (laughs) this African brother was over in London and he was using my course, I mean, he was knocking them off, you know. <laughs> and then he came, <laughs> hey, he he came home, and you know was using the chorus woo woo, and wasn't getting shit. And he hit me one time, and he we got to talking. 
And I'm telling you, well, man, come on, them motherfuckers in your country don't think like the bitches in my country or, or where you were. And we start talking about how to handle it so you can catch women in your country. Well, Africa. Now, hey, hey, caller, I just wanted to bring them up on what we're doing. So you saying you've been taking uh, the advice and you've been tagging them goddamn women? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, ask, let, let me ask you this. It is the mentality that you've gained from the course is it multilingual? Do it translate the same way once you understand it, no matter what language, no matter what country you're from? Yeah, it translates. I don't think it matters where you're from because it's men and women. Hey, hey, bro, listen. What you just did was say something really strong. I mean, and, and I didn't. I, I did ask you the question, but I wasn't trying to prompt you to say it. So, what I want to do now, where, what was you calling for? Did you have a question or anything? Did you have anything more to state? Because let's get with what you was talking about. Because I, I really love this man. Come else. on, Sean, Sean, you, you, you stay on here. Seven oh seven, you stay on here too. Because when we talk to, sure. to people that we uh, respect. We want to comment on what they saying. So come on, uh, bro from Ghana. Yeah, so I didn't have any other question. We can keep going. You said I said something strong, so we can continue. Wait, wait, wait. You didn't have any other questions. You just wanted to say that. Go ahead, because I don't want to put words in your mouth. You didn't have any other yeah, questions, I, I but you wanted... called. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I took the advice on, especially when you said, um, when they ask, uh, when they tell you you're coming on too strong, and you ask why, you get it from different women, and you start to adjust, and you know who you're dealing with and how to deal with women. And okay, wait, 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 bro. Oh, this is dope, you guys. There's some real shit right now. Let me ask you this, man. Before, when you wasn't ready for them asking why, you got a certain kind of response. And now that you're ready for when they, excuse me, before when you wasn't ready, you gave them a certain kind of response. But now that you are ready, is the response different? It's, it's, it's not really different, but they react differently. Wait, wait, it, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, you're going to see a lot of stuff, man. I'm going to be cutting you off because I want to get the point from what you just said. Otherwise, you said they don't really react different. Otherwise, you're not prepared for them to ask you why, but you answer. And you're saying when you are prepared for now to, for them to ask you why and you answer, you said there's no really difference. Yeah, there's no difference, but the way they react before is, um, you're, you're coming on too strong, and that's about it. But when you ask why, then they tell you, and you can have a conversation after that. They just come down. Okay, stop, stop, stop right there. Let me ask you this. Give me one example of what one of the women said when you asked her why. She said, oh, the first thing she said actually was, how many times a week have you done this? And I just smiled and I said, when I find someone attractive I speak to, that's, that's how many times I do it. I don't count. And she smiled and she was like, okay. And then we just had a conversation about me being attracted to her and she liking the way I was coming at her and the confidence I displayed. And then she just calmed down and then she just got really into the conversation and just said I should take it. Stop her right there. Stop, stop, stop. Listen. Everybody that's listening, you getting to hear some real shit. <laughs> he just told you that, you know, uh, initially he was getting just, you know, reservation. Don't nobody want to fuck with him. So we talked and he 
decided to incorporate what we talked about and listen at the difference in what he's actually saying. Because the last sentence you said, Brother in Ghana, is why I cut you off. I didn't want to lose it. And I don't even think you know what the last sentence you said was. Do you know what it was before no, I, I cut know. you off? You said she calmed down. You said you can see she calmed down, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, let me tell you why that's significant. Because you never can talk to that real woman. You never can talk to her unless she calms down. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you might see it as calming down. I see it as letting her guards down. Otherwise, yes, otherwise we both see it as some sort of signal. But, you know, calming down makes you still walk on ice. Man, I see she calming down, so let me, you know, tread easy. But when you say to yourself, she didn't drop her guards. You can rush her. You a boxer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't drop her guards. Huh? <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, 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 brother mm-hmm. Ghana, uh, Sean, seven zero seven. All you guys. I, well, Sean, I take that back. Uh, the brother in Ghana in seven zero seven. You guys are the having the same. Situation, different words, different scenarios, but it's the absolute same. So just imagine if, let's say, 707, you was in my SWU and, and brother in Ghana, because, God damn it, even though you got that shit, my course, you ain't been in SWU, God, because you ain't in my. Well, I said, just imagine if you guys was in SWU learning to really master these fine points that we're bringing out right now. These these fine points that if you allow to be brought up and you see clearly, but of course, for whatever reason, you don't think you need to be in SWU, you let it go by. I just just don't know, man. I don't know what to say. What I'm saying is, man, the brother in Ghana is proven that this shit is international, has nothing to do with, it has to do with two things. One, if you got two nuts, and two (laughs) is if you got a dick. (laughs) So what I'm saying is that's the only requirement to be able to, uh, John, you you killed me, man. (laughs) You motherfucker. Hey, Hey, but listen, let me tell you. See, oh, 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 Sean, he, he's just laughing. No, this is how life is when you got your shit together. You can see humor in statements and different things that you couldn't see humor in before because it's too serious right now. But, I mean, it's serious after you get your shit together. But when you realize you got your shit together, like this fucking Sean has realized, life is enjoyable. It doesn't... Right. Uh, pre- Sean, matter of fact, what does it do, or how do you see it now? Well, all right. So when you get the, when you get the course, you learn and you do way better than you did when you first started. Then, when after you do the shit, and then you go over the course again, then you start doing way better than you did when you first than you did when you first got your improvement. Now, you see so much shit, it's like a game. It's like so rewarding, it's like a game. So it's kind of like if, if I was on, it's, it's like if I was on, the, the Star Trek Enterprise, and I was in outer space, and it was some females out there. I don't know what their customs are, but I could figure out how to pull one of them in my mind. See, why you can figure it out 
is because you said they females, and you know, exactly. I loved it. Exactly. Hey, this, Sean, I know where you're coming from. I, you know, I hate that, you know, I'll be calling on you a lot, but I hate to call on you because people, you know, especially if they didn't heard this shit before, man, he call on Sean a lot. But let me tell you something about Sean. I don't care what I'm doing. If it's announced, this motherfucker is going to be on there. Why? Because there's nothing that he wants to get past him. Why? Correct. Because, because he fucking want to be a motherfucker. Why? Because he knows there's such a thing as being a motherfucker. So what? Because if you a motherfucker, it shine people... Which I will, you might not even know notice this, John, but I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I don't know, a couple shows ago. Remember that brother was talking about how he's going to get my shit because of you? Yes, sir. He did. But let me yeah. tell you this. Let me tell you this. I told you, you will know that you are at the pinnacle of being alpha and being confident about what you do when, when people describe you as a motherfucker. Because if they wanted to say you were the best, they could say you were the best. If they wanted to say you were the greatest, they could say you were the greatest. If they wanted to say that, that you was better than the greatest, they would say whatever that is. But if they, so when they can got not the word? figure out a word to describe you, <laughs> they say motherfucker. <laughs> Correct. Correct. That's the only catchphrase. That's the only hey, thing you can think of. Hey, hey, Sean, you was on the show, so you heard it. The mo- yes, he sir. describes you as a motherfucker. And that's yes, the absolute top of the line compliment. Because all Thank my you. life, all I ever wanted to be was a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys, this damn shit we doing is growing. Uh, even though you didn't got hella shit. I mean, if you want to take two, three, four more years, you can get hella more shit. Because we are growing, and I'm going to start uh, getting into different levels of what's going on. But, if you ain't got five years, get the course, get in the goddamn school that SWU, and in three months, you would know 12 times more than what you would know in five years trying to, you know, learn it with these crumbs. And with that, all you guys, 707, uh, Sean, uh, 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 hey, hey, brother in Ghana, please. Keep calling. Keep, you know, updating us. Because the only thing you got to do now, bro, and as a matter of fact, bro, let me tell you this. Bro in Ghana, you got to understand, now you're starting to command a respect for what you think as a man. And you're starting to be able to relay that to women of a total different culture in a way that they can see and respect it. Now, you got to understand that since you didn't learn that that's what you need to do, you have to perfect that. you got to, like, know how to realize that this is what they're thinking, and you got to negate that so that they won't really have to ask you the shit that they really ask them now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, now what that's going to do for you, once you're doing that, it's going to make you want, it's going to promote a desire for you to be ahead of her in conversation. And so you're going to start thinking of things to say. Otherwise, what I'm saying is you say this, you're going to have to start waiting. I mean, really, actually waiting for her to respond, and then you want to drop this on her. My point is you're going to be thinking so fast. 
you're going to be thinking so much ahead of her that you definitely want to drop what you want to drop, but she, you, you can't drop it until she gets through talking. Now, this could Correct. be only Correct. a second. <laughs> hey, 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 but this could only be a second. But it seems like forever to you. Bitch, when you going <laughs> to shut the fuck up? <laughs> she didn't say what she Correct. said, and it only took one second. But it was forever to you. Because when you finished your statement, you already was ready to say whatever. You was trying to wait for this second to go by to say. And in <laughs> real time, <laughs> and in real time, those seconds be like serious hours. They take forever. In yeah. our mind, <laughs> in our mind, real time is real time. Because we think it, think it, do it. So, Sean, this for you too. We got to also understand that think it, do it, we've mastered. But the person we think it, do it, we it, they're still in the think it, react it. <laughs> correct, think it, correct, react. Correct. Hey, think it, react to it. So if you in the think it, do it mode, Talking to a motherfucker that's talking about think it, react it, man, you're going to be so far ahead of this motherfucker in two senses that, that it's like not a good conversation. So you got to, Sean, this to you, this to you. You got to remember this so that when you see you're ahead, you can just patiently wait <laughs> for this fucking turtle to catch up. To catch up, you know what it's like. <laughs> Come on, yeah, what? You know what it's like. It's like it's like if you was boxing, and as soon as this person's getting ready to throw a blow, you got about four counter punches waiting, and you're just you know you're just waiting for them to get in the perfect position so you can just let these counter punches go. But you already got the punches ready. It's like you just wait. Hey, hey, you just hey, you just described you just described Muhammad Ali. He he <laughs> would. He would know that this dude really likes to lead with his right, even though uh -huh. he's, a, you know, a regular guy, you know, and, and got a doggone jab, you know, with his left hand, but he likes to lead with his right. He, uh, Muhammad Ali would say, okay, I got to count. No, 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 wait, I take that back. The average boxer that realized that would realize he should counter that. Muhammad Ali would say, I should counter that, but not only that, when his jab is one-fourth of the way released, <laughs> I'm going to start countering, and then by the time he extends his full jab, I'm going to come with this right cross. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and he didn't throw all that shit in a punch that only take a fraction of a second. Come on, Correct, man. correct. That's how, that's how fast, that's how bad we are. You guys got to understand that. We are that bad. And the only reason Ali could do that was because he knew you got to stand there to do it. And you got to have two nuts. I didn't thought it, but if I got one nut and I see I'm in it, shit, I'm backing up so I get out of that shit. But if I got two, I'm going to stand right there so I can deliver that knockout blow. Man. Mm -hmm. Hey, let me tell you something. I ain't even got to talk about Ali. I watched the fight yesterday. Uh, Wilder, Deontay Wilder, and yeah. uh, uh, Ortiz, Ortiz, Felix Ortiz. Hell of a fight. And what I'm saying is uh, Wilder won, but let me tell you, he in the seventh round, all they had to have was 10 more seconds. He was through. Yeah, he was in trouble. This or Ortiz had rocked his world. Mm -hmm. And then in the eighth mm -hmm. round, the motherfucker came out and he started whatever his plot was, but he tagged Ortiz. And he saw it hurt him, but then it, it, instead of him, you know, trying to do what he was doing, play it safe, he rushed in there and tagged him one or two more times which actually really fucked him up because the one he tagged him with didn't. But the ones he hit him with, since he was already kind of fucked up, 
He didn't need a really big one to hit him with. He hit him with just the right, and, and dude was knocked out. And what I'm saying, when he got through <laughs> Wilder, he said, man, I believe, man. He said, think it and believe it, and you will receive it. And I had to put it's that true. on my shit because that is dope. And that's what we need to be like. That's why we got to deal with people <laughs> that are calibers, man, because some other motherfucker that's not our caliber, we deem way lower than us, could have said the same thing. It would have said, you goddamn punk. <laughs> you fool. You punk ass motherfucker. Come on, goddamn shit is you talking. But but we heard De- Deontay after he did knocked out Felix Ortiz say that shit. Those are hella strong words. <laughs> hey you guys. Hell yeah. Hey you guys. This is what we supposed to do. Kick it. All of you supposed to come on with whatever the fuck you think and don't worry about me fucking whatever shit I talk <laughs> to come on this motherfucker, stand up, say what you think, and grow. With that, I'm out, you guys. Love you, Sean. Yeah. Love you too, brother. <laughs>